Welcome in, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God's got a word today, and he's talking today about transitions, okay? We've been going through a transitional season, a transitional period. And if you never went through a transition, um, I think I need. I think you need to check yourself because right now God's been doing a transition, and I got something to share. It's something that God placed in my heart when I was reading uh, last night, and it was about pretty much Moses, Moses and the Israelites, and them coming out of Egypt. See what God is doing in this world is He's shaking up the atmosphere. He's shaking it up, and what we've seen with the churches, right? A lot of these churches with COVID, people still staying online, not being bold, and there's a lot of people saying, "Hey, you know what? We got to walk in wisdom." People use that of how to walk in wisdom. They use it to try to say, you know what? I'm actually in fear. And God has not given us a spirit of fear. They tell you, oh, you got to walk in wisdom. You got to walk in wisdom about this whole COVID, this sickness. If you think that the things of this world, if you fear the things of this world more than you fear God, if you fear your challenges, your struggles, your Goliaths that you're facing more than you fear God, you need to go back and check yourself. You need to actually have a real deep, intimate relationship with the Lord. And this is what God showed me. We're in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. This is right before God was actually, he was in the burning bush. He showed Moses. He said, hey, I need you to go deliver my people out from Egypt. God wants to use you. God wants you to use your anointing. God wants to use your calling so you can go out there and set the captives free. Sometimes we don't even know that our calling is greater than what we can even think of, but God needs to shake some things up. You know what this season showed me? This season showed me that the churches are sleeping, that the churches, they, they're not even ready. They are not ready for what's going on. We're not prepared. We're sleeping. There's some dry places out there. And this is what God showed me. Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God is seeing what's happening in the churches. God is seeing how all these mega churches, all these churches that are compromising, he sees the sorrows of thy people that are dying because they're not getting fed exactly what they need during a time like this. You see all these people out there, they're preaching prosperity, they're preaching the blessings, the healings. And then when all this stuff starts to fall down in, in the world, where are they at? These people are sleeping. They're sleeping. And here's the thing. A lot of people are like, RC, sometimes you're too harsh. Sometimes you're too real. Sometimes this, this doesn't even sound biblical. Here's the thing. The biblical things, it might not sound good. It might not sound good to your feelings, but it's truth. And love rejoices in the truth. And this is what we're going to share. We're going to be able to say, hey, this is what we need. We need to fully equip. We need to talk about spiritual warfare. We need to really unveil and reveal and expose the plots, the schemes of the enemy to try to deceive even the people that are in churches and God sees your sorrows God sees your hurt and he wants to deliver you out of that and it might be you the one that he's using to deliver other people out of what they're going through so I said you know what I follow Jesus I don't follow man's teachings man man's doctrine and I guarantee you what God is doing is he's exposing all these religious people these people that have all these religious uh, rituals and things to allow it to keep you in bondage when it's like yo you need to get out of that you need to get out of that oppression you need to break free from that man-made doctrine you need to break free from these man-made teachings verse 8 so I have come to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them from that land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey. God wants to take you out of that oppression. There's people that are sleeping in church. They might have accepted Jesus. They might have said, you know what? Jesus is my Lord and Savior, but they're not transformed. They go to church. They go to services and people took advantage of that. You see that now people are thirsty. They're hungry to become, to come into God's presence. They're hungry to come to church. They actually say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm actually grateful I can come into an in-person fellowship. God allowed this stuff to happen, to shake, to shake because he saw the oppression that's also within the churches. And this is where we need to wake up. The sleeping giant, the church that is sleeping spiritually, we need to wake up. And God is saying, I've seen the oppression. And what's so interesting about what I see when God's allowing this transition of the churches, because here's, here's what's going on. There's churches right now that are literally going through this and God is blessing those churches that are faithful. He's blessing his mighty hand. His covering is upon those people and the ones that have just been playing church and have been doing all these religious things to just keep the people oppressed. God is lifting that veil up. God is tearing some things down. God is showing people that these aren't men and women of God that just because they call themselves a pastor, a prophet, just because they call themselves a man or woman of God doesn't mean they're doing God's will. So what God is doing is he's allowing 
allowing this transition to happen, what I truly believe is that people are seeking the true presence of God. People are seeking the people that are truly worshiping and allowing Jesus to be the, the one in their life, to be the Lord of their life. And these churches that have been faithful, that have been building underground, there's going to be people from the mega churches, from the people in the bigger churches seeking for those that are real. That are like, you know what? I'm going. I'm going where God's presence is. I'm going to the people that are truly worshiping, not just for your tithes, not just for your offering, but for your true sacrifice so you can go into church and you can leave it on the altar. You're not, you're either going to, I tell people, you're either going to run out of this church or you're going to run to the altar. Either way, you're either running away from God or you're running to God. And there's too many people that are going in. They're God's literally planning a transitional uh, period, a transitional season in their life. And those that have ears to hear, let them hear directly from the Spirit. There's people that come in and they leave and they're never changed. They're never transformed. And this is what's happening to the Israelites when they're out in the wilderness. You might have been out of Egypt. You might have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But Egypt is still inside of you. Bondage is still inside of you. Oppression is still inside of you. There's things that you still need to let go of. But your church, your, your ministers, your teachers, these people are just keeping you because they only want to tickle your ears. And this this is where we need to go in. We need to surrender it to God. It wasn't easy. The disciples, it wasn't easy for them to let go of it, but they had to. They said, you know what, Jesus, we forsook all just to follow you. Are you willing to deny yourself, deny your feelings, deny your plans, deny your vision in order to follow the God vision that's in your life? See, this, this anointing, just know this. Some of us, you guys might be in, in this transitional period where you're like, I gave it all up to God, but what now? Why am I getting attacked? Well, here's the thing. Anointing attracts attacks, okay? So you're going to get attacked when the anointing is on you. God's not after you. He's after the seed that, or the enemy's not after you. He's after the seed that God placed inside of you. And God wants you to be faithful. God wants you to keep ministering and stewarding that seed that he has planted inside of you. Anointing attracts attacks. So don't be weary right you go to Galatians chapter 6 uh, verse 9 it says do not be weary that in due season as long as you're you're planting on good ground you're gonna reap a good harvest you're gonna reap you're gonna reap you're gonna reap as long as you know you're doing God's will and the thing about all this is when you feel the power of the Holy Spirit when you feel the power the presence of God you'll know because there's purity in power you know that you're serving a pure church because you'll feel the presence you'll allow yourself to really deny your flesh to deny yourself so that you can allow Allow Jesus Christ to work inside of you. This is the power. This is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And what's so crazy is nowadays, all these people that are preaching truth, they're the ones getting hated. If you literally go back to Elijah, you go back to Apostle Paul, you go back to all these people that were anointed men and women of God, they might not have had a sexy message, but it was exactly what was needed in order to push the kingdom forward. It was exactly what was needed in order to push God's presence, God's wisdom, God's kingdom forward into the atmosphere and there's a lot of people that that people might not like but all I know is when I know where the power is when I see the presence there's power in purity when I see the presence when I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost the presence of the Holy Spirit there's none like it that's what we're going for we're chasing after God's presence where there's power there's deliverance there's healing there's joy there's peace there's true love and I'm not talking about the love of this world, which most people think is love, is actually lust. We're talking about the love of God. We're talking about having a covenant with Jesus Christ, a covenant with the Lord. And God wants to set you free. God wants to reveal you the truth. This year in 2020, God allowed these shifts to happen. God allowed a shift in the spiritual atmosphere, in the physical realm, so you can come into a, tr a transitional period. And I truly believe that those that are true warriors, true worshipers of Jesus Christ, they're going to go away because they see these gummy bear pastors out there. They see that they're not doing the will of God. They're still scared of the things of this world and all this stuff that they've been preaching for years and years. I believe those true warriors are going to be coming and going to sow in to those smaller ministries, going to sow in to those truth, uh, truthful and uh, those warriors of Jesus Christ, those that have been so faithful during the seasons, small ministry, big ministry, it doesn't matter how big or small. I truly believe if Jesus was here and he was preaching out, I mean, he had thousands. He was preaching to thousands in the multitude. So I'm not saying that Jesus' church would have been small. I'm saying it would have been the true worshipers, the true people following him and his teachings. And this is where we're at now. God is literally 
literally raising an end time army. God is literally raising some end time warriors to fight the good fight, to fight the battle. Too many people are fighting the battle in the physical realm when all of it is a spiritual battle. These leaders in the church, they call themselves leaders, right? Building these big mega churches, these big ministries. These ones, these people are still fighting battles in the physical. And the enemy has them deceived. The enemy has them deceived. And this is where the enemy, the spirit of compromise, the spirit of, of religion, right, is, is coming into the churches right now. And we got to fight this battle in order for revival to take place. So when, when God said, hey, Moses, I need you to deliver my people out of oppression. God used Moses to take them out of Egypt. And just because you're out of Egypt, doesn't mean Egypt is out of you. What things do you need to give to God? What things do you need to surrender? Is it your thought process of saying, hey, this is what I need as far as like of it feeling good? Or it might be even your finances. It might be your bank account. It might be a relationship that you need to surrender and let go of so God can deliver and use you 100% because once you let go of that thing, God can start moving. God can start working and there's going to be things you guys are going to need to cut off in order for God to work in you and through you. See, I'm in this in this verse, Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. I love the Psalm 1, Psalmist David, right? Even David. David needed to fight some battles in, in, in private. D David needed to fight some things. He needed to fight the bears and the lions before he faced the Goliath. There's some small battles that you need to face in order for God to bump you up into the platform, into the next season, into the big calling. And once you can face those battles, once you can steward the sheep, once you can steward what God has given you and be faithful with the little things, he's going to bless you with a lot more. God is just saying, hey, can you do it when no one's looking at you, when no one's watching you? Can you do it? without the platform because too many of us want to get up there before God allows us before we even face the bears and the lions just like how David did it so what are some things that you need to face you need to cut off from you need to let go of that you need to leave all onto the altar so you can leave church you can leave God's presence you can leave that service you can leave whatever it is behind and you can leave renewed different God putting in inching in a new anointing increasing that anointing increasing that wisdom increasing that discernment Psalm chapter 1 verse 3, it says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Are you planted next to the Lord? Or are you planted in just whatever your pastor says, whatever the teacher says? Are you, are, you, are you all about them and you never let the Holy Spirit be the final confirmation? You need to be planted next to God. You need to have a closer relationship with Jesus. You need to surrender to Him. You need to get into the Word and you need to pray to God and say, Hey Lord, I don't know what I need to do. You know, this is what my pastor said, but God, what are you saying? What are you saying, Jesus? And this is where you need to discern. You need to test these people. Just because they're in the church doesn't mean that they're always 100% Holy Spirit filled. Just because they prophesied something, just because they told you what you need to do, doesn't mean that it's you need to do that now. It might have been a message from God, but God is testing you to see, hey God, I heard that prophetic message. I know that message is for me. They're telling me to do it tomorrow, but is this really the type of a blessing that I should be receiving in this season? Is this the calling in this season? And God will reveal it to you. You. Just because they say it in one season doesn't mean it's God's timing. God's timing is so crucial. And that's why it says that brings forth its fruit in its season. In due time, you will be fruitful and you will multiply in due season. But you need to be planted next to Jesus Christ daily. Every day, the strategic wisdom, the calling that I have, when do I do it, God? How do I do it? You tell me to jump, I'm going to ask you how high. You tell me to plant right now, or are you going to tell me to plant this seed in the next season? You tell me to cut it off, I'm going to cut it off, God. I know that's an ungodly relationship. I know it. I know we've been together for years, and I've been trying to get them to Christ, but they're not leading me closer to Christ. So God, is this truly from you? Because I'm, I'm burnt out, God. You got to be real with the Lord. Some of us want to negotiate the blessing, but we're not willing willing to go through the battles in order to receive the blessing. And sometimes that battle, God is saying, hey, if you can drop it all, if you can have faith to just push through, if you can have faith that I'm going to use you for the next season, go through it, go through it, go through it, keep pushing, keep walking through the valley. And he says, whose leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. So whatever it is, you ain't going to be dry. Things ain't going to go dry around you. And if they are, it's because God says, hey, he who abides in me and I in him. And if they 
they don't abide in me, I'm going to cut them off and I'm going to toss them out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut off that branch in John 15. I'm going to cut off that branch and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bind it up and I'm going to burn it out. I'm going to cast it out and it's going to burn because that's not for you. That thing shouldn't be attached to you. God is doing a transitional period, not just in your life, in the body of Christ, but also in the world. And people's eyes are going to start to see who they're truly following, who their pastors are really trying to preach. Is it really Jesus Christ or are they using the name of God just to allow them to follow them? And this is where we're going to start this testing the spirit, discerning the people that we're following. Everything that you hear, just like Apostle Paul, when he heard the word, right? When he heard the word being preached, just like Apostle Paul and the Bereans, he went back and he searched the scriptures daily. You need to go back into your secret place. Too many of us want to get out there on the stage. We want to get out there on stage. We want to get out there. We want that shout out, but we never steward the thing that God told us to steward in the secret place. Whatever you steward in the secret place is going to be revealed in, in, in public, in the platform, in the stage. When you try to get that, whatever, whatever that shout out is, you get it all to God. And I tell people, you know what? I give it to God. God knows my heart. God knows your heart. God knows what you steward in the secret place. And that's why you will be blessed. Whatever you do in private, you're going to be blessed in public, just like David. And whatever you're doing, however you walk, however the, the people that you're following, because I do believe in spiritual authority, but be mindful of that spiritual authority and how they're stewarding the, the seed that God gave them in their secret place. And that's going to show in the platform. And when you have eyes to see how they're doing it, you know, their heart, you know, their intents, you know, their desire, you're going to start seeing and you're going to be like, this ain't from God. And this is the people that are going to be cutting off from those churches and they're going to be looking for the ministries to serve that truly are spirit filled, that are led, that are submissive to the Holy Spirit, that are submissive 100% to Jesus Christ and aren't compromising. And these are the churches that are going to rise up. God is raising an end time army, just like how he used Moses. He's using chosen women, appointed women and men of God to be able to build and push the church of Jesus Christ. That said, no matter what, I'm pushing forward. I'm not here to compromise. And this transitional period that has happened this year, God is about to stir up revival going into 2021. And you guys watch this happen. Watch it happen before your very eyes. And those that are surrendering, they're going to come from all around the nation going. I think, I, I truly believe that these people will leave their jobs. They'll leave their ministry. They'll leave what's comfortable in their hometown to go search for churches, to go search for fellowship that are willing and, and, and literally saying, hey, you know what? No matter what, I'm following God's calling and I want to be around those people. And that's what God is doing during this transitional period. Watch out, church, because God is cutting some things off that are not meant for you and God is unveiling the eyes of those that are real willing to surrender it all to be around people that have already surrendered it and around ministries and churches and fellowship around these people that are willing this is the transition this is what God wanted to do 2020 was for the year of believers this is the decade of prophecy and I'm telling you guys this God is raising end time warriors and an end time army so hey be blessed be encouraged stay strong in the Lord stay strong in the Lord no matter what know that your anointing attracts attacks and that if you're getting attacked God is allowing things to happen so that you can see directly what God wants to do in the spiritual realm. Not what it looks like. We're not here to walk by sight. We're here to walk by faith. And we only hear directly from God. And that's how you guys should be led. That's how you guys should be able to, to really push through no matter what battles, what challenges you go through. Just know that that Goliath that the devil tries to use to try to make it look like it's big. To God, it's small. Big God, small battles. I love y'all. Take care. God bless you. Have a great week.